Hi, welcome back. My name is Rebecca, and if you're new here, thank you for joining me. Tonight, I am making a garlic-infused olive oil, and this turned out to be much more, um, not difficult, but much more involved than I initially thought it would be. I thought initially you could just take some peeled garlic, throw it in a pan with some olive oil, let it fuse together for a little bit, and there you go, you have garlic-infused olive oil. And boy was I wrong. Um, so when I initially started researching this, I googled how to make a garlic infused olive oil. And then I started seeing things about is it safe to make a garlic infused olive oil and cases of botulism with garlic infused olive oil. And I was like, whoa, okay, maybe this is a little more involved than I thought it would be. Um, and it was. So believe it or not, I actually do research to make sure that I am providing good information and that I know what I'm doing. I don't want to be giving out incorrect information to anybody. And since I've never done this before, I wanted to make sure I was doing it correctly. So everything that I saw about how to correctly and safely infuse an olive oil pointed back to this one study. Um, and I watched a lot of videos and I read a lot of articles. Now you can make a garlic infused olive oil without using the process that I am doing, um, but you can only keep that olive oil for a few days, like two to four days tops, and it should be refrigerated. This is a way to infuse the garlic into the olive oil and have it last for longer. And unfortunately, I searched high and low, I did not find anything that says exactly how long this stays. So I'm not making a huge amount of it. Um, I know that it's gonna last for longer than it typically would, and this does say that you should refrigerate it, which I will be doing. Um, I know that other infused olive oils from stores say the last for about three months. So um, I'm not even gonna, I'm not gonna risk it. I'm, <laughs> I'm not going to keep it that long. I'm just gonna make a small batch tonight and use up what I have so I don't risk botulism, uh, which is like a bacteria that can grow in the olive oil. Garlic is a low acidic food, and so when you place garlic in olive oil, it removes the oxygen from it, and that can cause um, a really good environment for bacteria to grow, which is how botulism can happen. And botulism has no smell and has no taste. Um, so to be on the safe side, I am following the instructions that I found of all the things that to safely do this to um, to make this garlic infused olive oil and then I'm going to use it up within three weeks tops and I'm going to keep it refrigerated. I don't want to keep it any longer than that because I don't want to risk um, causing any harm or heaven forbid giving somebody botulism. Um, and I use olive oil a lot when I cook so I imagine I don't even know if I'll, it'll last that long. Um, but so that is my disclaimer. If you're going to do this please do your research um, or follow along in the guide that I have um, to do this safely because you don't want to harm anyone or get anyone sick in your family. Earlier today I processed all of the gar garlic that I had harvested a few weeks ago. It's been sitting out and curing. Um, so that's what I have left in this basket. I've given a ton away. I sold some. I'm still giving more away. Um, but before I did that I went out back last night and I grabbed a bunch of cloves of garlic to prep the process for actually making the garlic infused olive oil. So the first thing that you need to do before you put any, introduce any garlic to the oil is you need to put it in a citric acid solution. So what you do is take two cups of water and a tablespoon, I just wanna check my, I wanna check my measurements, but I believe that's what it is, yep. A tablespoon of citric, citric acid and you, it's the powder kind. You take that, you put it into two cups of water, you let it dissolve completely, and then what you do is take about two thirds of cups of chopped garlic. It needs to be pretty finely chopped. Um, I have chopped up uh, a whole bowl of it here. Um, you, you don't wanna leave the cloves whole because then the citric acid cannot actually get into the, um, into the garlic. And by putting the garlic into the citric acid and the water, you're acidifying the garlic, which reduces the causes of bacteria that could introduce botulism into your olive oils. Um, so this is the safest way that apparently anybody has found how to do this. So you want to soak your garlic in the solution for 24 hours. So I started this last night, 
Um, it's It's been just over 24 hours now. So the next thing you want to do is take the garlic that's been sitting in the citric acid and you want to strain it all. You want to strain all of the liquid out of it. So I'm going to do that now. And then it's very strong. <laughs> it has smelled like garlic um, in here since last night and it's it's very strong. Um, so after you do that, you just want to pat all of the garlic dry. Um, so I'm just going to make sure this is strained out extra good and then I'm going to put it on a single layer in paper towels and just make sure that it's completely dry before I move on to the next step. Okay, so I have patted the garlic dry and I already have a container of olive oil here. So I am using a 100% Italian extra virgin olive oil that I got at my local grocery store. Um, and the instructions say to use a dark colored glass bottle. I don't have a dark colored glass. Um, I'm just using what I have on hand. So to make the actual olive oil, you're going to take your olive oil and you're going to add your garlic to it. Um, it's one part garlic to 10 parts of oil. So I have quadrupled that. So I have about four parts um, olive oil to four parts of garlic that I'm going to do. So I am just going to drop that in and I'll, I'll save the rest. I'm going to have some leftover garlic. So I um, realize you can't see this. I will use this in cooking. I'm not going to get rid of this good garlic that I have. So that is four scoops of garlic added to my olive oil. You're just going to want to put a lid on this and you can leave the garlic in here for one to ten days. The longer you leave it, the stronger it's going to get. I would check it probably after five to seven days. See if the taste is to your liking. Um, and if it is, go ahead and take the garlic out. If you want it to be stronger, you can go ahead and leave it in. The longer you leave the garlic in, the stronger the taste will be. One of the things that actually really was confusing to me when I was doing my research was that you know, I was doing all of this research online and it said, you know, this is the safest way to do this if you want to store your garlic infused olive oil. Um, but then, like, I have all of these medicinal herbal books and home remedy books and they don't say that you should be doing this process and they say that you can keep your olive oil unrefrigerated for up to four weeks. So I was like, well, you know, I have a, an herbalist saying one thing and then this university who did the study saying another thing. Um, so I went the safe way and I did what the university did uh, just because I don't obviously don't want to get anybody sick. Um, so this is what I'm recommending. And really, you're adding an extra step, but it doesn't take long. It's a set it forget and forget it. You just, you know, once you chop up your olive oil, you're just putting it in the solution of the... Um, citric acid and then you're just letting it sit for a day so you know you don't get it done in a whole day but I think it's worth the extra step to go ahead and do that so you're not getting anyone sick. Another thing that I learned while doing research for this is that there are only three herbs that you should be infusing olive oil with and that is rosemary, oregano, and basil which I had no idea and the study also says that you should not be combining any of your herbs with your garlic, uh, which I also had no idea. And that is in direct contradiction to what my herbal remedy books say, that you can combine the herbs. Um, so for the sake of being safe, I'm not going to do that. And I also, I really do want to make a rosemary infused olive oil. I make homemade croutons and I think the rosemary olive oil would be so good on there. Um, but I, I do, I do want to make that and I plan on making that, but I didn't want to make it at the same time that I was making this because I wanted to make sure that I wasn't going to have too much and worry that I wasn't going to be able to use it all in time. So I think once this, um, garlic olive oil is all used up, I'll go ahead and I'll make a rosemary olive oil as well. And I actually think that, um, putting this garlic olive oil on the homemade croutons would be really good as well. So that is how you safely make a garlic infused olive oil. I had a, a ton of fun doing this. Um, 
I learned a ton, which I wasn't expecting that I would learn this much or I know more about botulism than I ever thought I would. Um, so if you're going to do it, do it the safe way just so you're not getting anyone sick. If you like this video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you can follow along on all my next videos. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you next time. You guys, I totally forgot I had this jar. I got this jar from the local thrift store and I freaking love it. It's so cute. And when I saw it, my initial thought was, oh my gosh, how cute would it be to put an olive oil in there? And then I totally forgot all about it. So I just switched my olive oil that I had in my relish jar over to this jar and look how cute it is. I love it. Really?